Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lad, and in this video, we are going to talk about the computer, computer programming, and the types of programming languages. A computer is a general purpose machine which can perform many computational tasks. Now, the modern day computers that we have, they can perform billions or trillions of calculations within a fraction of a second. Now, the thing is, these computers, they can't really do anything on their own. So for a computer to do something, one has to give the instructions to it. And these instructions will contain step-by-step -step information to perform a specific task. And these instructions are called as program. Now the person who is going to write these instructions or the program is called as the programmer. And here the programmer will write the instruction or the program and the computer will execute that or computer will work on that instructions. Now the computers that we have, they contain a lot of programs in them. There are some programs which will manage the computer hardware resources and they are called as the system programs. And there are some programs which will uh, provide specific functionality to a user. For example, the notepad, web browser, music player, video player, and all these types of programs are called as the application programs. Now we know that we need to give instructions to the computer so that the computer can work on it. Now the thing is how we can give the instructions to the computer or in which language we can give the instructions to the computer. Now, since this computer is a machine, how we can communicate with this machine? Now, the language in which these instructions are written or the language in which this program is written is called as the programming language. Now, there are several types of programming languages and we're going to see the details about them. Now, you guys may probably heard that the computers can only understand the binary language. Now, this binary language has only two values, 0 and 1. So, in this binary language, whatever you want to say has to be in the form of this 0 and 1. Now, here, these computers are built in such a way that they can understand or they can recognize the pattern of these zeros and 1 and then they can work on it accordingly. Now, why we have built the computers to understand this binary language? That is because this binary language, which has only two values, is easy to create in the hardware level. For example, if we have a wire and if the current is flowing through this wire, then we can say it is one. If the current is not flowing, then we can say it is zero. So in general, we can say that 1 stands for something which exists and 0 stands for something which doesn't exist. So since this binary language is easy to create in the hardware level, so the computer is built in the hardware level to recognize this pattern of 0 and 1. And while building the computer, for a specific pattern of 0 and 1, a specific setup operations are defined. So when the computer will see a specific pattern of 0 and 1, it knows what it has to do. So now the computers can understand this binary language and this binary language which the computers understand are also called as the machine language. Now let's see the types of programming languages available. Now in this modern day, we have a lot of programming languages available. So let's take a look at the types of programming languages. So the first type of programming language or the language in which we can communicate with the computer is the language which the computer understands. Now all of you know that these computers can understand this binary language or the machine language which is the combination of zeros and ones. So the first type of programming languages is the machine level language. And in this machine level language, we have the instruction in the form of 0 and 1. So whatever you want to say has to be in the form of 0 and 1. And since the computers are built in such a way that they can recognize these zeros and 1 and perform some specific operation on that uh, combination of zeros and 1s, you know, we can communicate with this computer in this language. Now, the problem with this machine level language is 
In order to program in this machine level language, one has to know everything about the computer. So here the programmer is directly dealing with the hardware level. So he is directly working on the memory and the data. So the programmer needs to know everything about the computer, the computer processor, the computer architecture, everything about that he has to know. And that's why this machine level language is a bit difficult to learn. And also think about this. Let's say you want to write a program in the machine level language or you want to give instructions to the computer in the machine level language and your program consists of thousand lines. All your instruction will contain this zero and one and this combination of the zeros and ones. First of all, it is difficult to write the program and also if you make some mistakes in your program, then it is difficult to spot. And because of all this, a normal guy can't really learn the programming easily. So to solve these kind of problems, another type of programming languages were invented and they are called as the assembly level language. In this assembly level language, instead of that zeros and ones combination, mnemonic or the symbolic codes were introduced. For example, if the programmer has to write an instruction, let's say he wants to add the numbers five and six, then in the machine level language, it has to be in the form of these zeros and ones. So let's say this is going to be the instruction to add the uh, numbers five and six. So in the machine level language, it will look like this, but in the assembly level language, mnemonic codes were used and the programmer could write add five, six. So a lot of mnemonic or the symbolic codes were used and the programmer could write the program in this way. So it was a lot more human readable format. The programmer can understand the code just by looking at it. And it was a lot easier to code than the machine level language. So now the thing is the source code or the program written in this assembly level language by using this mnemonic or the symbolic codes cannot be directly executed in this computer. That is because this computer can only understand the machine language. So what we have to do is we have to convert the code which is written in the assembly level language to machine level language so that the computer can understand it and execute it. So the program written in the assembly level language needs to be converted to the machine level language. And to convert that a program was used and that programmer is called as the assembler. So this assembler will convert the code written in the assembly level language to machine level language. Now this assembly level language was a lot more easy to learn and uh, someone can learn the programming a lot more easily than the machine level language. But this assembly level language also had the same difficulties. Although it was a lot easy to write the programs than the machine level language in assembly level language, if the program size increases, then again, uh, it is difficult to spot the errors. And also the code written in the assembly level language was also uh, computer architecture dependent. So the code written for one type of computer cannot be executed in uh, another type of computer which has different architecture. So again, to solve these kind of problems, a new types of languages were invented so that a lot more people can come and write the programs. And that type of programming languages are called as the higher level languages. The higher level languages are designed in such a way that they are very easy for a beginner to learn and they were very close to the human readable language. For example, in this higher level language, one could write the instruction to add five and six like this. So this five plus six is a lot more similar to the human language. So just by looking at the code, one can understand what we are trying to do. And since these higher level languages were a lot more easy to learn, many people started learning computer programming and started creating a lot more programs. Now, again, the thing is the program written in the high level language cannot be directly executed in the computer. That is because 
The computer can only understand the machine language which can contain 0 and 1. But the higher level language is very close to the human languages. So we have to convert the program which is written in the higher level language to machine language which the computers can understand and execute. So for this higher level languages there are two ways in which we can convert the source code from high level language to machine level language and execute it. And the two methods which uh, were used to convert the high level language program to machine level language, one was the compilation method where a program called compiler was used. This is the compilation method. Another method is called as the interpretation. And uh, for this interpretation method, another type of program called as interpreter was used. And we will see the details of this compilation and interpretation method a bit later. But here, just remember that although these are two different methods, what they do is they convert the program which is written in the high level language to machine level language which the computers can understand and execute. Now here this machine level language and the assembly level language they are called as the lower level languages because while writing the programs in this machine and assembly level language the programmer could easily access the computer memory and directly work with the data. But with the most of these high level languages the programmers can't directly access the memory and the work with the data. But there are some languages in the high level language type which allow the programmer to work with the uh, computer memory and the data. And uh, they are called as the middle level languages. And these middle level languages, they provide all the features of the higher level languages. And also they allow the programmer to work with the computer memory and data directly. And since these languages provide the feature of the lower level language and also the higher level language, they are called as the middle level languages. And we have the languages like C and C++. Uh, these are all the middle level languages because they allow the programmer to work with the computer memory and data and also they provide all the features of this high level language. And in the high level languages we have uh, Java, C Sharp, Python, etc. This machine level language which is very close to the machine or you know this language the computer directly understand it executes much faster than all these languages. So the execution speed of this machine language is very high. And after this machine level language we have the assembly languages and their execution speed is uh, better than the higher level languages but uh, a bit slower than the machine level language. And then we have the high level languages. So now as I said before in this higher level languages we can convert the code from higher level language to machine code in two different ways. One is the compilation method, another one is the interpretation method. Let's see this compilation and the interpretation method in detail. So first see the compilation. So in the compilation method, a program called compiler is used and this compiler will take the higher level language program and it will convert that to the machine language. And this process is called as the compilation method. And uh, here what happens is this compiler will read the high level language uh, program. Let's say this is the high level language program. It will read this program and it will convert that to the machine language. It will convert this entire program to machine language and then this machine language code will be executed. So the thing is compiler will convert entire program which is written in the high level language to machine level language and then that machine level language code will be executed. Now let's take a look at this interpretation method. So here also we will be converting the program written in the high level language to the machine level language and then executing that. And for that purpose, we will be using a program called as the interpreter and this process is called as the interpretation. So the process of converting the high level language program to machine language by using the program interpreter is called as the interpretation method. Now here what happens is 
let's say this is the source code or the program written in the high level language and this interpreter what it does is first it will read the first line of this uh, source code or the program which is in the high level language and then it will convert that to the machine code and then it will execute it immediately and after that it will go to the next line of the high level language program it will read that it will convert that code and then it will execute it immediately and then it will go to the third line and then again it will uh, convert that code and then it will execute it so in the compilation process the entire program which was written in the high level language was read first then it was converted to machine level language and then that entire program was executed at once but with the interpretation method the interpreter will read the program which is in the high level language line by line it and it will convert and execute each line immediately at a time and this is how the compiler and interpreter work now there are many languages in the high level language type and in that languages some follow the compilation method and some follow the interpretation method the languages which follow the compilation method are called as the compiled languages and uh, for example we have c c++ etc these are all the compiled languages where the compilation method is used to convert the program Uh, which is written in these languages to the machine language and the high level languages which follow the interpretation method are called as the interpreted languages for example we have python and this python is an interpreted language all right this is it guys this is about the computers computer programming types of programming languages compilation and the interpretation method and i really hope that you guys have learned something from this video and if you like this video then give a thumbs up and if you don't like it then give a thumbs down and also share your opinion about this video what do you think about it and uh, if you think that this video will help some of your friends then uh, do share this video with them and also you can subscribe to our channel if you want to watch more tutorials like this and if you subscribe to our channel then uh, when i upload a new video you will be get notified immediately so thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next tutorial